the chickens have come home to roost for fake nice guys. Yeah. Which is what this is. This is a fake nice guy epidemic is what this is. This, um, this iDubs gentleman, I don't know if you know him about him. He's one of these guys, Jet, who is all about being nice and saying things like, oh, he's just the nicest guy. This is just the nicest group of people. These are just the nicest, but under the skin, ain't, ain't nothing nice. Zombie under. Straight off the bat, I want to let all the newcomers to my channel know that I'm perfectly fine with bullying. Make fun of someone because they're fat, autistic, or riddled with acne. I don't care. Make fun of them. I'm not like actively choosing to like be less negative or, uh, you know, bring people up. I don't think it's an active choice, but it's like, I think by nature, when you go and meet people, uh, you form a connection and things in general are just going to be a lot more positive mm -hmm. when you actually have a connection with someone, a uh, so personal true. connection, you meet them, you know, and that's, I think that's in general, why a lot of, you know, uh, commentary videos will come out and blow up is because it's, uh, it's, you know, if, if I, <laughs> I'm certain if I, you know, met some of the people that I've made videos on in the past, if I met them in person first, there would probably be sort of a diminishing motivation to make a video about them mm -hmm. because you're not going to see this weird persona that they put out there. You're going to see something a little bit more real, something a little bit more human. <clears throat> mm -hmm. As, yeah, it's just what what is what's what outcome could what outcome do you think this person would want? You know, put them to, put them together. I put them together in 15 seconds. I knew from that email, but um, every step along the way, like we did the the gaslighting document, like none of that shit is at, is at Idubs's expense. Like we didn't try to make him look stupid in the in the uh, in the way that we like sort of playfully flipped his his intentions. Like we didn't try to counterpunk him. But at one point, he said, um, at the at the tail end of the documentary, when he wasn't getting the footage that he wanted, he was really upset, like like, a, like an angry like child. Like he was pouting, he was fucking pouting in his car and shit. And he said, um, uh, not to me, but to somebody on the crew, he said, usually I'm the puppet master in these situations. What? Yeah, he said 100% on God. He said that. Usually, I'm the puppet master <laughs> situations. That's how he views himself? Idub's the yeah, puppet I guess, master? I guess so, man. I guess so. I did not like the interactions that I had with fans. There were quite a few human beings that I interacted with. In that, person? Yeah, in person. That just sucked. Ooh. They just sucked because I attracted a lot of people who sucked. Some people, were, as I described earlier, were very much like antisocial, weird basement dwellers. And you know, the one time a month that they come out of their cave is going to restock on supplies at Walmart and they run into me, their favorite YouTuber. Which is kind of the lifestyle you were living at the yeah, time. Exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't blame them. <laughs> and what would they say? What would they do? Things that I am certainly not gonna repeat. <laughs> so I'm talking bad words. Either all of them are okay or none of them are okay. But if you try to come online and tell me that I can't say a particular word, but you say words that are just as offensive in the famous words of Tana Mojo, kill yourself. <laughs> but like, so when you, going back to the PC thing, mm -hmm. you just, I mean, like it's, you just, it's. I just really don't, like I always, I envy comics who are able to get away with saying fucking anything. Yes. Because like, I don't really care about, um, I, I just think it's, it's kind of, it's in a way, it's kind of a skill. It's like, to be able to frame your shit. It's a tightrope walk. Yeah, and it's, I feel like it's more interesting. Uh, so I always just wanted to be able to do it. So kind of early on when I saw mm. the opportunity to say something, I'd be like, all right, if I happen to get bigger at some point, I can always point back and say, this isn't offensive. Mm -hmm. What I did then was offensive. That's funny. Mm. So get so off you, my ass sort of thing <laughs> so, you know? so you set the expectations that like right exactly you already said that so yeah. like this is not offensive so, so if President Obama tweets at you and he's like yo Idubs you're fucking offensive mm -hmm. and then what do you point to him and be like yo Obama chill out look at this from my e earlier career <laughs> I mean <laughs> obviously the nigger faggot thing right oh but that wasn't even that long ago no it wasn't oh I mean has my career been that uh, I guess I remember initially hearing the word cunt and how 
how awful that sounded, but I've used it so frequently that it means fucking nothing to me now. Cunt. Cunt. Tech cunt. Tech cunt here. And okay, cunt. So all of you people out there who hold these words at such high esteem, you are giving it the power that you so desperately want it to not have. Another point that people like Tana seem to miss is that you can critique people's use of the word nigger. You, you can even critique my going to your show and doing it in that sense. You can say, well, that wasn't even funny, because it really wasn't. I, I replaced say cheese with say nigger. How funny is that? Not really funny. Let's go, fans, take a picture, because this camera's like from the oh, future. Oh, that's Say nigger. Uh, I also take ownership for the Tana, the, the Tana thing mm. was, uh, was my, oh, that was so long ago. Was my idea. Was my stupid idea. Yeah. I was the one he that suggested, was... like, we can go to the <laughs> place. It's just I, in San Francisco. I'm like, it is just in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, that drive and everything. And now I think back to it, I'm like, I can't believe we literally harassed an 18-year-old child uh, at her show. To be honest, that's something that I, I definitely regret because she's the complete opposite. She's like open book. She'll stream and she'll talk about her entire day. I think a lot of people get angry or frustrated or they doubt her because they haven't heard it from me. But, you know, everything like she's my partner, you know, everything that she says, like, you know, for the most part, I'm down with. Tana, you are not a social activist, nor are you a good person because you're bloviating on end about being against racism and being for equality and spreading positivity. You know, this interview is an example of that. It's like plenty of people can reference it and be like, oh, see, you said this here. Mm -hmm. What about that? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm at the point in my life where I'm fine with it. Plenty of it is like, you know, uh, well-deserved. Like, you know, if I'm going to put some negativity out in the world, like, it's very understandable that I would have, have it come back. It's either all okay or none of it's okay. It's important to remember if you ever mistakenly identify a word as off limits. No words are off limits. You're allowed to get offended by the words and say, oh, I, I, I didn't like that very much. But for you to come at the person and say, you're a bad person for saying this. You're racist for saying this. At the end of the day, everything's a choice. Black people can choose to get offended by black slurs. Asian people can choose to get offended by Asian slurs. White people can choose to get offended by black slurs. We need to sort of show people what this event's all about. If you look at everyone on the card, like, these are like super decent people and they like they are have successful. very thriving successful careers. They have not, you know, been uh they're like, all interesting. Yeah, so it like that's that's what we want to keep it to. Like it's a super positive event. There's like no reason to involve uh people that might uh, you know, taint to that. Uh, yeah, info leak time. Info leak time. Dr. Mm. Mike actually didn't want to do a pro fight. Ian did. Okay. Oh. So that should Pro tell fight you something. Is three minute rounds and uh, 10 ounce gloves. Mm -hmm. 10 ounce is small. Yeah. More pain. Also, More pain. it goes on your official record. Your official like everybody record. cares about their pro record. Yeah. I'm sure so. Dr. Mike has uh, got big plans in the. Uh, I mean, I think he's a soft individual. <laughs> oh, he's think, soft. I don't think Come he about him how soft. Tough he is, <laughs> he is soft, tough. huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, you, kind you, you could you can have muscles, but be soft. His mom I, died though. And, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know. Yeah. What? It's, well, well, when uh, Dr. Mike offered to fight Ian, we actually showed that video to our coach before yeah. taking it and said, what do you think? And Michael was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Fuck that guy. Yeah, yeah right, like he was so right confident. Right. So, like, we've been... This is our main event, and I can tell you right now, while these two are competitors, while they're respectful, as the time nears, things are going to get interesting. Oh, uh, we'll still be respectful in the ring. <laughs> the judges have scored the main event as follows. Brian Jackson scores 50 to 45. Michael Ross scores 50 to 45. And Tito Wilgo scores 49 46. To the winner by unanimous decision, Dr. Mike! We also like found a bunch of secure people. 
like people that are secure mm. in their life, happy. Right. They're not young. Like a lot of these guys that are doing like a lot of this beef, like they're young. They're not secure with themselves. Let's talk about the controversies first. And there were, for some reason, quite a few during uh, my fight. Uh, the glove touch. So Dr. Mike did a glove touch immediately into punching. Correct. Uh, Dr. Mike is definitely showing me coming oh. up right away. A little bit of a cheeky yeah, shot off cheeky. the glove touch. I, I, I don't... And I'm not going to say it was against the rules or anything. It was fine. He can do it. Uh, it definitely took me by surprise uh, because I'm just not used to that energy. When I'm sparring, I've, I've hardly faced people who are like, all right, now you're going to fucking die, bitch. Uh, so it was just a little bit much. Sorry, Dr. Mike, you don't have knockout power. You do have black eye power. So the commentators can say that about you. But they, I mean, they, they can't say knockout power. Even with those 12 ounce gloves, no knockout power. So we're sitting there and Alex comes in the door and we were oh. like, oh. This was recently? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So you had to come face to face with your opponent. Face to face. They sat and talked. Did and you have to hold, did someone hold you back? <laughs> No, we're very respectful. Yeah, I know. I know you. you. You love respectful fights. You make fun of the fact that his name's Wasabi. You make fun of the fact that he made a bunch of content for kids. You make fun of him for having fallen off. Oh man, he fell off big time. You can make fun of his fucking where he's from. He's from Kentucky. You can call him Alexander Horseradish, which is the perfect name for old Kentucky boy. Alexander Horseradish. You can make fun of the fact that Fousey Tube pieced him up. You know, Dr. Mike got his ass beat. Fucking hate that guy. Round of applause. Did you dirty, <laughs> man. Did you dirty, right? The last one, I, I just, that clip is, makes me a little bit upset. It's just, he, that was fucked up. I don't like to say too much about Ian it. Ian is a professional. It's, it's boxing. <laughs> um, I feel like, okay, yeah, I respect that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, people are allowed to have their opinions that it <laughs> well, was let like, me... not very sportsmanlike. You make fun of the fact that he does weird choreography videos and he thinks he's in an anime. You can make fun of the fact that he loves anime. You can make fun of him for having a boxing ring in his backyard. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? You're not Floyd Mayweather. Why do you have that shit back there? This, um, this iDubs gentleman, I don't know if you know him about him. He's one of these guys, Jet, who is all about being nice and saying things like, oh, he's just the nicest guy. This is just the nicest group of people. So to give, to give the audience some perspective, um, I'm just gonna throw a guess out there just cause you know, I have been sued multiple times. I've won every time, but um, yeah, Froggy Fresh would be in a position where he'd have to sell his house basically to, to fight this lawsuit. Like that would be like for a normal average middle-class person, you're gonna have to sell your home to fight a lawsuit like this. Like you're going to. Exactly, man. That that type of shit is, uh, it's not it's not funny stuff to play around with. It's it's especially fucking uncool if you're a if you're a boxing if you're a. Hey, we're all friends here. We're we're having good, clean fun in this boxing organization. We're all fun. Like this this fake nice guy shit. This Bro, I was down for dad when nobody else was. And this motherfuckers, I was like, damn, dad's a savage. Dad been working. Because I don't want to see nobody take no L's. Especially because this dude's already in his early 40s. This motherfucker's coming up on the end. I want to see him catch wins. Why the fuck I want to see dad fucking fail? I think dad's got fucking hands. I think he's a savage. When I was at fucking Denny's, I was all like telling them, yo, dad's a fucking savage. And they're all like, no, nah, no. Nah. Dad doesn't... Dad doesn't spar with high level fucking competition. He's gonna lose to A B. And I'm thinking these Wait, motherfuckers are So who up. said that? Who said that? Fucking Ian and Anissa. Like that's the way these motherfuckers are. And then they got dad like riding for them. They don't even and if like I wouldn't be like this, but if everybody's gonna keep calling me out like I'm the fucking person that's fucking fucking shit up, like that dad's out here riding for them. They're all like they don't even fucking give a fuck about him. That is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I love my girlfriend and I'm totally fine with dudes jacking off to pictures of her on the internet. Doesn't affect me one way or the other. 